Hi everyone, hello people, hello words and hello Philippines, welcome guys to my channel, let's talk vlog Shout out po sa inyong lahat, nandito po ako sa likuran ng aking inopang bahay, ayan Medyo madamo pero maganda at uh, mahangin, ika nga, sobrang edit dito actually So, hmm? shout out sa inyong lahat pa ulit ulit But anyway guys, ha? yung video natin na ito, ha? Uh, magbigay lang ako ng reaksyon at bigyan ko kayo ng uh, kunting info, no? Marami sa atin ang hindi nakakaalam. Ang ang tinutukoy ko guys ang pagsanib pwersa ng TV5 at ang ABS-CBN. According nga to our uh, Congressman Marcoleta, mga bes, hahadlangan niya po 'yan. Hmm? Kasi pag mayroon kang nilabag pang batas at may kaso ka pa, ika nga, hindi kan man pwede makikabit. Hmm? Hindi naman pwede 'yun. Uh, ang hirap dito sa malalaking network na ito. Wala silang pakialam sa batas ng Pilipinas. Basta gusto nila, gusto nila. Pero hindi nila alam na mayroong isang tao na talagang magpupursige, na hahadlangan yung mga uh, hindi magandang hakbang na gagawin ng TV5 at EBS-CBN. Nako po. Siyempre guys ha, ang dami pang uh, uh, nilabag na batas ang EBS-CBN. Alam po natin yan, kaya sila nasa ranga eh. No? Siyempre sa citizenship. At siyempre ah... Uh, And natural guys ah yung utang nila na 1.3 ay 1.6 trillion pa oh at hindi lang yan mga besa ah. hindi talaga pwede mm, magsanib pwersa kaya haharangan ni kung yan congressman Marquelita at ito pa ang hindi nyo po alam hmm? alam nyo ba ah, ang TB5 ay hindi pag-aari po ni Pangilinan siya po ay CEO lamang dyan siya, ang TV5 po ay pag-aari po ng Indi Indonesian National. So, ibig sabihin, sa, at, sa ayon sa ating batas, bawal po ang pagmamayari ng isang network sa Pilipinas, dapat 100% e Pilipino. No, di ba? Eh, bakit nagkaganon? Hmm. Nako, masasabit itong TV5 mga guys. Ha? Ito ah, baka hmm, matitik down na naman itong... Ah, TV5 na ito katulad sa ABS-CBN. Yun po, uh, ayon sa aking nakuhang impormasyon, mga bes, hindi pag-aari ni Pangilinan ang TV5, kundi pag-aari ng in isang na Indonesian national. O, oh, naloko na, mga bes. O, oh, yan. Sisiya sa atin nila yan at suriin. Actually, under investigation na ngayon yan. So, ito, pakinggan nyo ang speech ni Congressman Marco Lita tungkol dito guys sa TV5 at EBS-CBN. Lagot kayo ngayon. O, oh, di ba? Social. <laughs> But anyway guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay? And don't skip the ads. And see you guys on my next live. And video, paus ang ating babus. Ingat kayo. God bless us all. Mua, mua. Mr. Speaker, I would like to recognize the Honorable Marco Lita, Dante Marco Lita of Sagip Partidist. What is the nature of the matter in which the gentleman from party list, Sagip, is rising? I will speak, Mr. Speaker, on the recently concluded deal between TB5 and ABS-CBN. The gentleman has 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a question of privilege. Last week, The merger between ABS-CBN and TB5 was announced. I think it was met by public skepticism based on the initial requests of TV stations and radio stations requiring comment from this representation. Mr. Speaker, to be honest, I think the merger left a bad taste in the mouth. It leaves much to be desired. It is public knowledge, Mr. Speaker, that two years ago, on the application for renewal of ABS-CBN's franchise, this Congress, or the 17th Congress to be more particular, denied the application for renewal because the 17th Congress was able to establish several violations that justified the denial of that franchise. What are these, Mr. Speaker? I can recall a long list of violations 
ABS-CBN did not have a permit on the digital broadcast for all their channels. It has no permit for the encryption of its signal and its contents. ABS-CBN violated the cease and desist order issued by the National Telecommunications, Telecommunications Commission. ABS-CBN also operated and sold illegally millions of TV Plus black boxes without the approval of the National Telecommunications Commission. ABS-CBN also made telecast on pay-per-view even without the authority of the conditional access system by the NTC. Mr. Speaker, there were flagrant violations, not only the rules and laws, but also the Constitution. I think even the Constitution was desecrated by ABS-CBN by violating the exclusive Filipino ownership and management of mass media by the issuance of what we call the Philippine Depository Receipts. And as I speak today, Mr. Speaker, several employees of ABS-CBN who were terminated illegally by that network won their cases in the Supreme Court, two cases of regularization and six cases of illegal dismissal. These cases were won in the Supreme Court, Mr. Speaker. And two of these already had entry of judgment issued by the Supreme Court. But the NLRC, Mr. Speaker, for, on, for unknown reasons, did not even lift a finger to help the workers. Some of them are older already and some are dying already, Mr. Speaker. I can probably blame the concerned agencies of government who did not act on these violations. For example, the BIR promised at that time that they will look into those allegations of non-payment of taxes, of correct taxes, by employing a dubious subsidiary called Big Dipper to operate like a tax shield in order to obey, evade the payment of rightful taxes, billions of taxes due to the government, Mr. Speaker. There is a subsisting memorandum order of NTC, Mr. Speaker, that a franchise grantee should not enter into commercial agreements in which the NTC has jurisdiction with those companies or parties that have obligations to the national government or the national government. It is my humble submission, Your Honor, Sir Speaker, that these violations, oh, by the way, Mr. Speaker, this representation calculated the administrative penalties that should be paid by ABS-CBN to the government. And my calculations totaled 1.6 trillion pesos. If, there, if this can be considered as obligations to the national government, then the NTC order, again, should be applied. Ang problema kasi, Mr. Speaker, this concerns agencies, A NTC, the BIR, although it promised to look into the allegations of this tax evasion schemes did not bother. They lacked the vigilance. They did not summon the agency or even the sense of duty required by the respective offices. And by every measure, Mr. Speaker, I think even TB5 has some obligations in this deal. With the substantial purchase, Mr. Speaker, of the outstanding stocks of ABS-CBN, I believe Section 10 of the franchise of TB5 was violated because the rights and obligations 
have virtually been transferred to ABS-CBN. Who puede di ba, Mr. Speaker, na ang isang network na hindi na natin binigyan ng lisensya because of this established violation. Wala na siyang prangkisa. Pwede ba siyang sumakay ng ganun-ganun lang without settling the obligations to the country, to the government? Is it possible that something that cannot be achieved or obtained directly can be obtained indirectly? I think this is a basic dictum in law, Mr. Speaker. We cannot do that. Section 10 of the franchise of TB5 also prohibits merger with other entities without prior approval of Congress. Wala pa po tayong approval. So I said, this particular deal must be looked into, Mr. Speaker. And I think, because of this, because of this deal, we have yet to have let the proverbial cut out of the bag, Mr. Speaker. Why? Media Quest, the parent company of TB5, is owned by PLDT Beneficial Trust Fund. And the grapevine, Mr. Speaker, is so loud that PLDT Beneficial Trust Fund is owned by an Indonesian national. So if we will reminisce, Mr. Speaker, that the PDRs were utilized indirectly as conduits for foreigners to own mass media in this country by desecrating and circumventing the very constitution that we have. Baka naman ang mangyari, ganito rin, Mr. Speaker. Magigising na lang tayo and we will have to see Deja Vu once again. Mr. Speaker, somebody said that the only the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. I humbly seek the good men of this chamber, Mr. Speaker, to unite and rally behind a good cause and do something. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Speaker.